Hey there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And let me let me clean up my desk. I'm almost ready for my video. I had a million things going on this morning. Had to take my husband to the airport. And then I wanted to hurry and fix dinner. And then blah, blah. All this stuff that I wanted to do before. So let me hurry and clean up my desk. And I'll show you the project that we're going to make today. Oh. Lord have mercy when you're not well when you're semi prepared, but anyway, okay, so let me um clean a little bits of paper off of that, bring that back in, and let me show you. So, this is the card that we're gonna make today. I think it's a really cute card, it's a clever idea. I need to give Lauren Scraplot credit, that's where I saw this one. It was a little bit different. I'm using the snowman from the um Snow Wonder stamp set that looks like this. It also has a set of dies. Let's see if I, yes, I do have them here that look like this. Whoops, get that glare off of there. Well, maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Anyway, so that you can buy those as a bundle. They're in the mini catalog. And um, they're only available right now while supplies last because they are on the retirement list. If you have the, if you need the retirement list, let me know and I'll email it to you. Um, also, if you're interested in shopping for Christmas, Stampin' Up! has told us that you have until December 13th, and if you order on the 13th, you'll still get your stuff in time for Christmas. There you go. So let me show you, because this is a shaker card using a clear envelope, and I made something like this last year, only it looked like this. Do you remember this one? Now I'll try to put the link for this one in the video. I won't be able to do it right after the video. I won't be able to do it till tonight but how I made this one, and this one is the clear envelope here, and I just attached it to the card front, put the shaker stuff in there. But that's how I did last year's. Let me show you how this year's is. Okay, so we're gonna start with a piece of cardstock. And now, if you watch my videos, you know that usually I use thick Whisper White on a card like this, but since we're gonna double it up, I'm gonna just use basic white cardstock. I think I said Whisper White instead of Basic White. I'll never get over the fact that we used to sell Whisper White and now we sell Basic White, but white cardstock. I have a piece that's eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna cut it in half at four and a fourth, and then I'm gonna score it at five and a half. Now, if you were gonna make a bunch of these, I would suggest you score it at five and a half first and then score it. Uh, um, then cut it at four and a fourth, and that way you'd have two card bases all done with just one step. But now I have my card base. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half because now I'm ready. And then I'm going to set this aside and get other stuff ready. Okay, my paper's crooked. Okay, let me. Um, I think I'm going to stamp next. So I have here just a scrap of basic white. I've also taken those scallop contour dies. You know how much I love these and I cut a um, scalloped rectangle to look like that. And I think that's all the pieces we need to stamp on. That's true. For the um, ink colors, I'm going to use Mossy Meadows, some Misty Moonlight, some Balmy Blue, Oh, no, and I, oh, and um, Poppy Parade, and then some Black Memento. Let's start with the Black Memento, and that Snowman. And ink him up. Good. With the bigger stamp, it's easier if you lay them down like this and bring the ink to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink. Then I'm going to take him and just um, stamp him down on this scrap of basic white. I'm gonna hold him there. I'm not applying a lot of pressure, but I'm holding him firm to make sure to let that ink sink into the paper. Look how cute he is. Okay, and then with those trees, part of the stamp set, and that mossy meadow ink, I'm gonna go ahead, let me bring in a scrap piece of paper. That one's terrible, this one's a little bit better and I'm gonna stamp these trees down here at the bottom where this stitching is over to the edge, like that. And then this one, whoop, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit, 
still over to the edge, making sure that this part is just next to that tree. I don't really want to cover it up, but I'm going to just stamp him right there. That way that still leaves room, leaves room for my greeting up here. So let me show you some um, details with my other two cards, and we'll decide which way we like it better. So if you look at this card, this one, this was my first card. Now I've changed up my green. This was garden green. And I stamped on this one the snowflakes in the back, and on this one I didn't. And I think I like it better without the snowflakes, so I guess we're not going to use the balmy blue. But if you do like the snowflakes, I just took that snowflake with the balmy blue ink. I stamped off to make it a little bit lighter, and then I stamped those snowflakes up at the top. But I'm going to leave them off of this card. I think I like this layout better. It looks just a little less busy. So then with that misty moonlight and I looked and both of these sentiments the sending you blessings peace and magic this Christmas season and the Christmas wishes and joyful greetings both fit on here so I think I'm going to use the Christmas wishes saying put that on my block here bring in my scalloped rectangle ink that up good I'm going to practice once just to be safe Yep, looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and stamp it here on our basic white. I might get my head in the camera, but I want to make sure I have it centered between those stitch lines on that rectangle. Yep, looks pretty good. Ha oh, dang, I did good. Okay, so now let's just color. I think we're done stamping. Let's just color our snowman. I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends, and I'm going to use the light. Let me make sure I have one. Yep, the light misty moonlight and I like to use the bullet tip or the pen tip I'm going to just color his little hat I'm not going to worry about shading or anything because with these distinctive stamps they already have that done for me I'm going to just lay down some quick ink or yeah I guess it's ink in my pen huh right here on his hat and then a little bit on his um, scarf Now all these measurements will be on my blog, and I, sorry, I don't have time this afternoon, so they'll be on my blog later this evening. I'm hoping this evening and not tomorrow morning, but I have a busy, crazy day. Christmas is really, well, it's starting to kick in, I guess. There we go, a little bit of color there. And then on these little berries here, I'm going to just grab some, of, this is the light granny apple green. Well, not the berries, this is going to be the leaves. And then I'm going to put... Some of those little this is poppy parade on my little berries looks like that and then last i think on his nose i'm going to take some pumpkin pie now believe it or not this is dark because my light pumpkin pie marker has disappeared so i don't know if he wore out and i threw him in the trash or i put him in the wrong place but i had to use dark because i can't find the light and you can hardly see it because of that um distinctive stamp anyway Okay, I think he's done. And then it dawned on me, one more thing I want to show you between the two cards. Now, on this card, when you open it up, it's just the trees. But on this card, when you open it up, it has that hidden little happy holidays. And I want to add that to my card. So with that Poppy Parade ink. And this time, I'm going to use the Poinsettia stamp. The little happy holidays right here in the Poinsettia. Let me get that out. I don't think I have it ready. Nope, here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on the block that I had for the snowflakes since we're not going to use them. Just pick that up just like that. I'm going to bring in my mat. And let's see if I can get this one. Oops, first of all, not upside down. And straight. Ink him up really well. Let me practice one time. Yep, looks pretty good. And then... I'm going to just hide it back here in the corner so it's going to be behind my snowman. Looks like that. Okay, so now let's do, let's let this all set aside, let that red ink or that bright poppy parade ink dry and bring in my envelopes. 
So it's Stampin' Up Clear Envelopes, and let me grab one here. I had to get a brand new pack. Now I can't find the opening. Here it is. But I'm going to just grab out an envelope here, and then we'll need a piece of window sheet. Now if you watch my videos, you know that I'm always afraid I'm going to lose my window sheet. So I haven't cut my window sheet. I left it in the package. And that way I wouldn't lose it when it was time. But we need a piece of window sheet that is four and a fourth by five and a half. And I believe this is four and a fourth. Yes, it is. Whoop, no, it isn't. It's almost four and a fourth. Let me trim that down just a little bit. And then five and a half. And that's just the size of a basic card front. Okay. And I'm gonna take that immediately and put it into my envelope and I'm gonna make sure that the open, well it doesn't matter, I'm gonna put it in here when I put my sequins in there, that's when it matters, there's a piece of lint in there. So now this is the front of my envelope or where the flap is and this is the opening or the what I'd call the back. So I wanna make sure when I put my sequins in there it goes in the front. I hope that makes sense too. And I have the shimmery, what are these called? Subtle Shimmer Sequins. They're with the cabin suite and they're in the mini catalog too, but I'm gonna hold this open and just dump a few little sequins in there. Let's see how many, I'm gonna add just a couple more. Yeah, I think that looks good right there. I don't want too many, but yeah, you gotta have enough. This is kind of a simple card. So you can see, simple is in the fact you can see how much shaker. Usually with the shaker domes and stuff, it's hard to see when you have enough in there. So I'm gonna take this piece and that card base that we made in the beginning, remember this is the 11 by four and a fourth and I scored it at five and a half. And normally your card would open like this, but we're gonna turn it over and have the fold part at the bottom. But before I do that, I need to take a piece of scotch tape and I had it right. My desk is so messy. Where's my scotch tape? Hmm. All right, let me grab another piece of scotch tape because my scotch tape has gone missing. But I want to close this part here. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the envelope, but there's a little tiny strip between the opening of the envelope, it's on this side, and the window sheet. And I want to put tape as close as I can to the edge there. So that way you won't see it on the front of the card but yet I can get that piece so those sequins won't fall out. So at the very top of that envelope, and now my envelope, whoop, let me take this so it's not taped shut too, under that flap there. But now my envelope is taped shut, and then I'm gonna just use my paper snips and cut that extra tape off. Now this is gonna be on the inside, so it won't really matter, you won't see it, but I'd rather not have that on there. Okay, so now my shaker pieces won't fall out of my envelope and this is gonna be hidden. Okay, so with my envelope now, or my, I'm sorry, my card front now, I'm going to line this up and now this is a little bit wider than your card front because your envelope's a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter when you look at my card, you can't even tell it's still really cute. But I'm gonna put some sticky strip right here at the top on the inside of that basic white piece of paper like this. And this is the tricky part. Let me take that release paper off. Like that. And I'm gonna line up the front here of my um, card front. Remember the fold is at the bottom. And I'm gonna line these two up, make sure it's in the center, and then I'm gonna fold this piece over let me take this off too. There we go. Now, <laughs> now I'm gonna line it up here, line it up so it's centered here, and then fold this piece over and attach it to that um, tear and tape. That's, did I call it sticky strip? I tended it to that tear and tape on the back. So now it opens like this, but yet this is still open. So now we're just gonna put some tear and tape back here and fold, oh dang, <laughs> that tear tape strong, did you see what it did to my card? Thank goodness it's the inside. We'll just cut that off. 
talk about bloopers. Oh, Lord. Okay, and a little bit of tear and tape here at the top. Come on, tear and tape. Make me look good. And then we're going to go down the side here. And then probably just for good measure, I'll put one in the center just a little bit here just to make sure that it's down. I'm gonna press on all those. I'm going to grab my take a pick tool to get those release papers off. There we go. Okay, Latwell is giving me a heart. There we go. So then we're just going to take this and close it right there. And now that now your card base is nice and thick. It has that hidden part at the top. Now this part here bothers me, so I'm going to just take my paper snips and trim that little piece of tape off. Just kind of hide it a little bit more. And I'm going to do the same thing over here to this side. And now look how cute you have those little pieces of sequins in there and they shim, they um, shake on your tree. Now I know that's pretty plain. Let's spruce it up a little bit. So I have a piece of designer series paper and I should have brought this over. I'm not sure it's part of the trees designer series paper and I should have looked at the name. But like I said, this evening I'll put all the um, supplies and measurements on my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com and you can see it all there but just a little bit of stampin' seal. I'm gonna attach our um, scalloped rectangle to the front of that designer series paper, and then that designer series paper is gonna go underneath that clear envelope right here. And now I cut that down, this is five and a fourth by four my designer series paper is a perfect layer right there and now look how cute oh wait let me get those sequins down where they belong there we go i am going to take my bone folder and run it over the top it's laying down pretty good but that would just reinforce it and look how cute that is now let's take our snowman here and i'm going to run it through my big shot before though i'm going to show you a couple things i'm going to go ahead and cut this in almost half. I don't know if it's exactly half, but I want to cut out two of my snowmen and so I can do it at the same time. So I'm going to lay my um, plates for my die cut machine. I'm going to have number one and number two and then my cutting pad and then my snowman here and my die. I'm even going to take a little piece of um, washi tape to hold him down so he doesn't move. Or at least the die doesn't move. I don't think my snowman will move. Ha ha. Like here. I'm going to put it up here on this side of paper so it doesn't stick to my actual snowman. That's good enough that will hold him there. And then somewhere is my other cutting plate. Oh, don't tell me that it's not right. Did I have it right here? Oh, there it is. Okay, and then lay that on top. Bring in my machine. Open it up. Let me set him, make sure. Nope, he didn't move. He's gonna cut through both pieces of paper. Now, because I'm going through two sheets of paper, I'm gonna go ahead and go through, and then I'm gonna come right back. Okay, and now we have two snowmen because I'm going to show you some other differences in my card and then that way you can decide which way when oh, I'm off a little bit, but I think he's going to be okay. I think he did move a little bit. Well, this would be a good example though for you. Well, I can't do it because I'm not going to. Anyway, he looks, he's, he's off a little bit with my die cutting and I would cut him down, but then he's not going to be the same as this one and I need him to be the same size so I can't cut him down. Anyway, so when you go to put your snowman on there, you'll notice the back of him has the bleed through from the markers. Now, if that bothers you on this one, you can see that second snowman, I cut him and I covered him up with that other piece of paper. 
if it doesn't bother you, this is what he looks like. But you can see that you don't see any adhesive on there, right? Because that's what, if you want to cover up the adhesive. And a way to do that, so wait, let me start over. So if you want to put your snowman on there and cover them up, you don't have to worry about adhesive. You can use any adhesive you want. If you're going to do it this way, let me show you how. I'm going to bring in Stampin' Up's adhesive sheets. Let's see, this is probably looks like a pretty good piece. He should fit on there. Oop, I bent his little arm. Yeah, he's gonna fit good enough. So I'm gonna take, not that one's too small, this piece here and take that release paper off. So here's where he's released it's sticky and I'm gonna just lay him on here and this is gonna turn him into a sticker. And then when you peel him off, all of that adhesive is sticking to my snowman. Careful I don't rip his arms off, but you can see. There we go. And then I'm gonna just take these ed edges that look bad and kind of fold them over on top of him. Move this out of the way so we don't make a mess. And then I would take this, where did my card go? Here it is, and lay this. Now I'm gonna make sure too that I cover up that happy holidays but look, you can't see the adhesive on the back of him. And I have one more spot right here I missed with the adhesive. Okay, and then I just lay him down like that. And look how cute your card is. Now, you don't see the adhesive on the back because I use those adhesive sheets. But you do see that marker. So like I said, if that bothers you, we can take him, make sure I have him the right way, like this, and put a little bit of adhesive on here and then you can cover him up. Like that. And then the inside looks as nice as the outside and you have that hidden Happy Holidays. Isn't that a cute card? I think that's a great card. So who was it again? Lauren, thank you so much for sharing. And I hope you like my card. Like I said, if you want to order anything from Stampin' Up, be sure you do it. Um, on my online store the link will be attached and before December 13th so you get your stuff in time for Christmas so you could give your husband <laughs> or your wife or your significant other or your children your shopping list now and they'll still have all your presents before Christmas thanks for watching and I'll see you back here on Monday have a great weekend bye bye